This is the Cubic Mini Grizzly is the model. They have a smaller model. Um, this is a Grizzly. It's their big version, which is interesting because it's not big. Um, I think they say this is, I'll look up the specs, but 100 square foot, something like that. So I just want to go over the overall operation of it. It's just any wood stove, right? So it has um, a couple different dampers. One thing that's interesting is the one on the front's pretty obvious. This sliding mechanism opens these three. Closed is to the left, fully opens to the right, and in between is the other. Now the bottom is has a lower intake and so when you adjust this in and out it's opening that intake and so what they say is to open it up fully um, after the fire is already going so as you can see it's not really a very big firebox um, normally I'd clean this out but we really don't need much of a fire. I just figured I'd show you. Um, so, just like any fire, you start with small pieces. I don't really have any small pieces right now. So, we're just gonna grab some pieces that we have. So, like any fire, you can do whatever you want. That's basically, um, teach their own. Everybody's got some sort of a different method. Basically, all I do is make a little trough or a valley, put something in it that will light. I just have a bunch of off pieces kicking around here, leaves and stuff that come trapped in, excess that would um, be trash otherwise. And we'll just put a couple other small pieces on top. Now, they say not to burn any sappy wood, so like pine, um, anything that creates a lot of residue in the chimney. Now I didn't think that'd be an issue based on the reviews and other people's videos I've seen, but I burned a bunch of cedar because it burned so well and I had a bunch of offcuts from different projects. And in all honesty, that is probably what was creating extra creosote in the root um, flu. So, can't quite see it in the shot, but the flu here um, had a, quite a lot of creosote um, build up to the point where it actually clogged the roof cap that came with it. It had like a nice um, stainless steel mesh around the whole thing, and it clogged it. So in the middle of the winter, it's 20 below, and I couldn't get this fire going for the life of me. Well, turned out it wasn't getting enough air. So, fine here, but it's got to go somewhere. And I thought it was frozen. No, it was fully clogged with creosote. So, I just ripped off the stainless steel mesh. So, like a small bird, I guess, could come down in here. But, um, so, yeah. So, basically, you just light her up. Because it's so small, I find the small the uh, extension lighters are a lot easier because you got to get right up in it. Um, you can cheat these little deals, um, Amazon, whatever. They work really well. So you just stick that in there. I don't think we really 100% need it right now because um, it's not frozen. When it's frozen, it's a little bit of a pain. Um, so light it up. And then don't close the door all the way, just kind of crack it. And you want to have all of these um, pushed in for closed and to the right for open. So basically, you just want that fire to really get going before you open or control um, the amount of oxygen. That's just basic fire nature. Um, you can really turn this down quite a bit, but you need it fully going, some red hot coals. Um, they also recommend not to be burning coal in this. For a minute I was like, awesome, we can burn coal, because you can just basically find it on the beaches here. And 
So we got 100 pounds of coal for like 20 bucks from somebody that was collecting and literally just picking it up. And I read online you're not meant to do that. I guess the heat that it generates is not safe. So I'm like, okay, guess I'm not doing that. But you just basically you get a little fire going. Uh, I'll open it up so you can see. If you leave it open, it's not going to really get going. So you really want to just crack it to get a little bit more flame. Sorry for the weird sound. The dog's deciding to eat something in the background. Now, if that flame's not quite good enough, which this is not really going, just add a little something extra on there. It's just birch bark. Burns quite well. Alright, there we go. So once it's going like that, this open, you can adjust this. Now, See how that does almost nothing? I find it almost useless. Um, I think it has... Part of this design has some a little bit of recirculation. It brings air in, but it kind of recirculates it, which is why it says keep it closed um, when you get it going. Um, I don't really find that it matters. I play with it a little bit, but I have not seen any need for this. But I do know that they sell a, there you can hear it now. See how that does nothing? That, bam, killed it. No change. So if you're finding you're not getting enough air, I just leave this open a bit. Oh, and we put it out. So, maybe we'll cheat. Put a fire starter in. I know it seems weird to be burn the plastic, but that's what they say to do. And then you can close it up since you're doing that. That's basically it. Once it comes to temperature, the fan on the top um, will spin. That's just, again, Amazon special. Um, it's not really worth, in my opinion, spending a lot of money on the things that do the exact same things. The knockoffs imported from wherever um, seem to do a pretty good job. So once that gets hot, that all starts spinning. And right now it is... 59 degrees outside, 57.4 degrees inside. That fire will basically make this 75, 80 degrees in the next probably hour um, because it's so warm outside. It's a pretty cool design. The bottom, I don't like. So the bottom... This is, so this has a nice little door, and that's what they sell on their website, um, Cubic Mini Wood Stove. The wood stove's excellent. I really like it. I find the base is kind of useless, because you can fill it with wood, but it doesn't get hot down there, so it doesn't dry the wood out, so if you're like me, and you have a bunch of frozen wood, there's really not much you can do. So I don't put any of the wood down there. So I just have this kind of hole. Um, if I do it again, I would probably not buy all their fancy backing. Um, it has the shield that comes with the, that you can buy. It has the backing shield here. It's not designed to go in the corner like this. I just made it work. So I doubled up all the backing plates. So each one of these plates is about this wide and there's two of them. And it's meant to go flush against a wall. So the backing plate would be needed. Um, it says within, 
again I gotta look up the stuff I think it's 20 inches or so um, unless you have the backing shielding but I don't think you really need it none of that has gotten hot and I have had this roasting like very very hot um, so we ended up doing like Dura Rock uh, concrete board basically on the back and then we just had some tin kicking around um, to be honest that never gets hot either so I think if I was going to do this again I'd probably build a custom base that has more absorbent material in it um, maybe concrete or river rock something to that effect so that it would slowly absorb the heat and then release it throughout the night because there's nothing here to absorb the heat um, so when it's out it's out the other thing that's interesting and I have seen this and I, I was gonna explore this is some people I've seen will put a steel plate on the top because um, it gives you more places to put like the cute little kettle um, again it's Amazon cute little kettle and other things they do sell like a oven thing that you can slide on there but I think it'd be a little bit better um, to use like a sheet of metal on top and then maybe river rock all around it so you imagine if all of these voids were just filled in with river rock um, again the bottom doesn't get hot so I'm not really sure if there's any point putting anything there um, but some sort of material that will absorb and release the energy or the heat if you will after the fact now you can see this is not clean I didn't clean this it does a reasonable job of cleaning um, the glass I don't I'm not I don't really care the cleaner that is the more it keeps me up at night with the flame in my face and I'm always looking at it um, but it does clean up really nice it's really quite a pretty unit they sell a black one I really like this uh, brass and black steel look it drafts very well I don't have any issues I did follow the directions on how um, many inches down from the roof and all that sort of fun stuff their website has a ton of really good information and this is all from their website I would not suggest buying your own um, flu the flu that's the same size as this is designed for pellet stoves and it is not designed for the heat um, that would potentially cause an issue um, I would just do this now this is double walled up here so there's insulation between this wall and this so this keeps going all the way through to the roof um, to all the way to the cap the, the entire thing it's one piece but then it's insulated here um, and they do that um, for drafting purposes um, I'll show you see what it looks like outside and it's drafting really quite well it doesn't create a ton of smoke and I just threw in some spruce and almost no real smoke that you can tell um, it did come with the so this again it's from their website this is their metal flange found it kind of a pain in the biscuit to be honest um, but it didn't help that I was doing it while it was snowing but I didn't like the fact that it didn't adhere very well um, I also, you can see the white, I bought the wrong sort of roof flashing um, silicone material. I didn't buy what they said because it wasn't at the hardware store. Um, that's what I get for just going to the box store. So it all washed away the next day and then I scrambled and bought the right kind and kind of went on top. I've had no leaks though, so that was good. But you can see, see the staining on the side? That is the creosote buildup from the top that I was saying, where it clogged the top. Um, it just, so 
There's meant to be a stainless steel shield. I just ripped it off. Still works, still got a cap, doesn't rain in. Um, not my recommendation, it's just what I did. Do whatever you want, obviously, but um, yeah, besides that, that's a cubic mini wood stove. It really does a great job this purpose. Um, I think I would buy it again, for sure. I would just design it a little bit differently. Um, I left the door open, otherwise I'd see um, just in this, you know, six minute video here what the temperature difference is. But with the door open, a little hard to see, we're two degrees warmer than we were. So, yeah, that's the Cubic Mini Wood Stove. Grizzly.